and welcome to our presentation on music therapy distance learning in Minneapolis Public Schools. My name is Anusha Ramaswamy. I'm Melissa Hentges. There are three different music therapy delivery methods in Minneapolis Public Schools. The first is on the IEP, which means that music therapy is considered to be a related service. It's included in evaluations and re-evaluations, and it means that we have found that music therapy makes a significant difference on a specific student meeting their IEP goals and objectives. We also offer a programmatic service model, which is determined and purchased on a building to building basis, during which music therapy would be part of the scheduled school day, uh, typically for students in a setting three or four classroom, and music therapy would technically be a specialist class. Additionally, we offer a consultation model where music therapists consult with special ed related service and other general education staff to support them in utilizing music effectively with any students that they might work with. We will begin by reviewing the virtual music therapy delivery models outlined by AMTA COVID-19 Task Force members Seneca Block and David Knott. In their video on virtual music therapy, they outlined three tiers of service. Tier one is curating online resources. This is providing appropriate content for your students or clients from existing materials, such as YouTube or GoNoodle videos. In our service model, this would fall under consultation, where teachers can access our materials and select songs to include in their own lessons. Tier two is creating original content, so creating videos using existing or original materials. One thing to be aware of when creating materials is copyright issues. Many music therapists and musicians have given permission to use their music during this time. That is something that you do need to check into and be aware of. So in our service model, this would fall under programmatic services, where we're providing a session tailored to a specific class that already receives services. Now bear in mind, this is not just a collection of videos. These videos are all based around learning targets or themes related to classroom curriculum, and they're organized like a session with a hello song, a goodbye song, and other interventions in between that our students would be used to seeing. Finally, tier three is implementing virtual music therapy or the telehealth approach. If you're working as an IEP related service, this would be direct service. Minneapolis Public Schools has identified Google Meet as the acceptable video conferencing platform for us to use for one-to-one -one, um, sessions with our students. However, that may be something else for your organization. Also within our district, families reserve the right to opt in or out of direct service during this time. And we found that using tier two materials can be a great bridge to those direct services, giving students the opportunity to practice accessing materials online or to use as indirect support while they are opting out of direct services. Our district music therapists are engaging with students at tiers two and three during the COVID-19 school closures. And this video will focus on our work in tier two, creating original content. Our team began by creating a list of protocols and considerations in an effort to create content that is accessible, equitable, and inclusive during distance learning. We started by taking a look at our organization's protocols, including video hosting and privacy preferences, as well as the standards of effective instruction that are dictated by our district and that we as contracted educators are required to observe and plan for. So for us, interventions are required to not only be relevant, but also aligned with state academic standards and classwork. As a team, we chose to create consistency through our own video protocols. We talked about things like branding, opening and closing all of our videos with the same sequence and the same music, as well as creating a script to begin and end each of our videos, clearly identifying ourselves, the name of our organization, really making efforts to make our families and students feel safe and like they can trust the content that we're sending them. Some additional considerations that you might wanna make for accessibility, as well as cultural and socioeconomic sensitivity might be uh, plain, simple clothing, maintaining um, a visible mouth and face, using high contrast images if possible, recording all of your videos, videos in a neutral environment, and using language that is simple, clear, person-centered, and accessible to all kinds of learners, including English learners. 
Some of the features and tools that we've utilized in creating our own content is the use of opening and closing slides as well as an opening script, which outlines who we are, our organization, what the intervention is, and what the client will need to participate. We found the use of opening slides and the script creates a sense of consistency and professionalism. So if a client is viewing a video of a music therapist that they've not worked with, they can still see through the use of our district logo and branding materials that this is coming from the district from the music therapy team. Also, per our contract, any instructional materials that we create are owned by the district. And by using these opening and closing slides, it acknowledges that. Now, a lot of the tools that we're going to talk about are specific to Apple devices because that is what our district uses. If you do not have an Apple device, there are softwares and app applications um, that can do similar things and you may just have to do a little research on what your device has. The primary tool that we use is iMovie to do video editing. And one of the key tools that we've used is picture in picture. And that's where you have two or more videos happening simultaneously. And we do this because then you can lead and maintain the structure of the music in one video and be a model for the student or client in another video. So not only do you have the auditory input of the music, but then you have a visual representation of any directions that are happening within the music. We're going to show you a quick example of this. Uh, this song is called Shake of My Egg. It's by Stephanie Level of Music for Kiddos, and it is used with permission. Gonna shake of my egg, shake of my egg, shake my egg all around. Gonna shake of my egg, shake of my egg from the ceiling to the ground. Shake it up high, shake it up high. Your shakers. The next tool we'll talk about is Keynote, which is Apple's version of PowerPoint. And we've used this to input animated graphics into our videos. Once again, this allows us not just to rely on the auditory cues of the music, but to provide visual cues as well for our clients. Now, you can absolutely hold up visuals yourself while you're filming a video. However, we've found that using something like Keynote ensures that the image is easily visible within the video and it keeps our hands free for playing accompanying instruments, using signs or gestures, or modeling actions. We'll show you a quick example of that. This is a song uh, by one of our district music therapists, Amy Hager, that she created for an Earth Day lesson called Garbage, Recycle, or Compost. Oh, I have an orange peel with Additional tools that we've found useful during this time are Google Chrome extensions such as Screencastify. And what this is, is it allows you to capture your Chrome browser in a video so that you could create demonstration videos or help families navigate through accessing online materials. Other helpful tools are there are a number of apps out there that you can use to do things like picture-in-picture -picture very easily. Acapella is one of those. However, something to keep in mind with apps is you often have to pay for a full version or pay for a subscription in order to access all the features of that app. And given budgets or um, organize, organization protocols, that may or may not be an option for you. Now, if some of these features are brand new to you, as they were to many of us when this all began, there are many wonderful how-to videos on YouTube that you can find. Um, some key search phrases that we've used to learn about these are picture-in-picture in, picture in iMovie, multiple picture-in-picture in, picture in iMovie, 
animated graphics in iMovie, keynote tutorial, things like that, and you'll be able to find many videos to help you get started. We want to emphasize, finally, that graphics, visuals, and special effects should be utilized with intention and function in mind. In our district, we are expected to adhere to standards of effective instruction, and interventions we utilize both in person and via distance learning should be standards aligned, evidence-based, and relevant to students. Our district elected to use Google Classroom and Seesaw as the district-approved learning platforms for teachers to use. Our music therapy team decided to join the classrooms of teachers who we support, as opposed to creating our own music therapy classroom. This is a difference that we decided to focus on because, in our opinion, it increases the access and ensures that we're aligning with and supplementing classroom work, just like we would during the typical school year. Additionally, though not every single student in Minneapolis usually receives music therapy in their building, our team made the choice to make distance learning materials available to every teacher and every student in the district. So this would fall under a tier one service. Um, we would provide teachers with curated resources that they can take and utilize within their own lessons. In our district, to reduce the number of items being assigned to students each day, Specialists such as art, music, and physical education teachers were instructed to post weekly rather than daily assignments, and we decided to follow that model as well. Our music therapy team split into two groups, one for elementary and one for secondary students, in order to differentiate our weekly assignments based on age. We utilize a bingo card style music therapy assignment, or choice board, which requires student interaction and can be turned in at the end of each week. Included with each week's assignment is a title page, which outlines the lesson theme and the learning targets for that week. This is an example of a choice board for the elementary team. You can see the format is clear and simple, and the interventions are appropriate for that age group. Now this board could be simplified even further to only include the number of choices appropriate for your client. Here's an example of a choice board from the secondary team. There are more instructions and different types of interventions, such as music history lessons, games, and links to outside resources for further exploration of topics. Now students access these boards through their Google Classroom. They would click on the links of the interventions that they would like to complete, and then move the red dot over each box they've completed. These assignments can then be turned in, which allows us to track student engagement. We also consider the tools available in the different platforms for responding to assignments such as submitting a note, comment, or video clip in response to the weekly activities and utilize those tools as well, which you can see outlined in the instructions in this Seesaw assignment. One of the benefits of using these various response tools is it gives us the ability to see not only that the student has completed the work, but how they are connecting with our materials through their own videos, drawings, and messages. In our district, we recognize that we work with a diverse student population, which includes dual eligible students. That is, students who qualify for special education and whose home language is something other than English. In order to increase accessibility to those students, we included both written and spoken directions for our choice boards in Spanish and Somali, which are the two most common languages spoken by families in our district. These directions are included with each week's lessons. Finally, as we previously mentioned, we chose to make our materials available as a Tier 1 resource for all teachers in the district. In order to accomplish this, we worked with our district IT department to create a music therapy distance learning Google site. This site is included as a direct link on our special education distance learning intranet page. And each week we upload our lessons and then teachers or other related service professionals can copy the link to the entire slide or to a particular song in order to include it in their own lessons. We want to thank you for taking the time to learn a little bit about what distance learning looks like in the Minneapolis Public Schools. We'd like to close our presentation today with a song. This is a song written by Jackie Edwards, who is a music therapist with St. Paul Public Schools. It's called Who Did Something Great Today? We hope that you take the time to listen to this song, sing along, Learn it if you think it might be useful for the work that you do. And remember to identify something great that you did today. Hi, this is Miss Melissa. Welcome to MPS Music Therapy. 
This song is called, Who Did Something Great Today? Now in this song, when you hear the singing stop, we want you to think about what did you do today that was great and put it in the song. And if you're making music with somebody at home, you can tell them what they did today that was great also. Who did something great today? Who did something great today? We are so proud. 